We are at Star Wars Celebration and we just got out of the Lucasfilm Studio panel where so much was announced and we're joined by none other than Kathleen Kennedy herself. Kathleen, that was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. <laughs> yeah. A yeah. couple of hours we were up there. Yeah. It was pretty amazing. You know, I've seen everything, yeah. obviously. But when you get it all together like that and put it in front of people, it's it's overwhelming. Yeah, and I, they were all very exciting, but I think people are really excited for Dave Filoni mm -hmm. to get a feature film. So what made you both decide that it was time to make that jump for him? You know, it hasn't been something that we just decided. Mm -hmm. It's actually, I feel like it's been something we've been working toward, and he's been working toward for almost a decade. Yeah. So this is a very evolving process. Nothing happens, you know, overnight, but it's really thrilling to see him take this step. Mm -hmm. And as we all know, he's had such a big impact on the Star Wars universe and mm -hmm. its characters. So, you know, can you tell me if it'll feature any characters that we know and love or new ones? Well, it will because he's obviously taking all the work that he's been doing in animation and now mm -hmm. in television with Jon Favreau. And he's moving some of those storylines into the feature space. So... There's going to be a lot of people will recognize. Yeah, absolutely. And I imagine it might tie into some of the shows that we saw today. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the intention. Yeah. And I also want to talk about James Mangold. Um, did you see his work on Indiana Jones 5 and think, all right, this guy needs a Star Wars? Well, I've been following Jim for a long time. Yeah. I mean, his work has been consistently so good. And when certainly when he did Indy 5, it was clear that he's a real filmmaker and mm -hmm. he loves movies and he loves Star Wars. He yeah. always has. And he's constantly been in my ear, hey, maybe, maybe, maybe. And then he came up with this idea, and we sat down and talked with Dave about it and, mm -hmm. and Carrie and all of us and, and agreed that this would be a really good next step. Yeah. And of course, it was so exciting to have Daisy back today. Oh, that yes. was huge. That's huge. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what point in, in, in Ray's life are we going to rejoin her? Well, we're 15 years out from Rise of Skywalker. Right. So we're kind of post-war, post-First mm -hmm. Order, and the Jedi are in disarray. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of discussion around who are the Jedi, what are they doing, what's the state of the galaxy. Mm -hmm. And she's attempting to rebuild the Jedi Order based on the books, based on what she promised Luke. Mm -hmm. So that's where we're going. Yeah, and you mentioned Luke, and I think he almost seemed like a almost a cautionary tale mm -hmm. in the most recent trilogy. Will we see any of that play with Ray at all? I don't know as we'll spend a lot of time in flashbacks or Force yeah. Ghosts or things like that, but certainly the spirit of what he represents to her is going to be significant. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, it's 15 years after the rise of Skywalker. So are the other two films, do you see them more as standalone movies? Oh, yeah. What we're doing, when, I, when we say standalone now, a lot of the storytelling, as you can see in the work that we've been doing in television, we started as a standalone idea, and yeah. then it's grown. And I, I think the potential of that could happen in these different eras of the timeline. But I don't want to make a commitment to that until we really get into it and see how it plays. Yeah, and I kind of want to talk a little bit more about that. I think the beginning of Disney Plus was kind of the beginning of a new era for Star Wars. So what have you learned about putting out Star Wars content in the past like three, four years? I, th I think it was huge, yeah. actually, almost by accident. Mm -hmm. Because interestingly enough, it's a format in which George was inspired when he first did Star Wars, serialized storytelling. And so when we got into the television space and realized we had this kind of long form storytelling that we could get into, it was really conducive to Star Wars. And it's given us a lot of flexibility, opportunity to experiment. We knew we needed to introduce new characters, mm -hmm. new storylines, and we could do that without the huge expectation of a movie. And yeah. now we're ready to move back into the movie space, and it's really exciting. Yeah, and for all the movies that we did hear about today, we do know that there, have, there are some that have been shelved. Well, they haven't been shelved. Oh. Most things haven't been shelved. Development is a complicated, long-term process. Mm -hmm. Some people, we, we're dealing with scheduling, yeah. because obviously really talented people are working. Mm -hmm. So we don't, it, it's often not a shelving. It's, it's just, is it ready? Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah. So I'm thinking about kind of projects like Rogue Squadron yeah. and Kevin Feige's project. So could those still see well, the light of day? Kevin Feige's project was something announced in 
the press or I suppose yeah, yeah. fandom, mm -hmm. but there was nothing, nothing ever got developed. Right. We never discussed an idea. We did, you know, as everybody knows, Kevin's a huge Star Wars fan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if he did come up with something, I would be all ears, but that's never really happened. So mm -hmm. it's not an abandoned right, project. Right. It just didn't happen. Now, Rogue Squadron, any chance? Rogue Squadron, that definitely is something that we still talk about. Whether it's a movie or whether it ends up being in the series space, that's definitely something. Fantastic. And we've talked a lot about movies, but I want to talk about the really exciting shows that we got a glimpse of today. So you have Ahsoka, you have Acolyte, you have Skeleton Crew. What do you hope each of these brings to your current Star Wars universe? You know what we're seeing, and Dave talked a lot about this, we're seeing the opportunity for fans to find where their entry point is mm -hmm. in Star Wars. There's a lot of things now going back almost 50 years. Yeah. So it, it, you don't want to... You don't want people to feel like they have to see everything in order to step into Star Wars. And we also want to look at the generational aspect of Star Wars. It's always been something that's been passed down. So something like Skeleton Crew, we're really excited about because, you know, that's it, it's aimed at younger kids, but mm -hmm. will still bring in the fans, still bring in adults. But that's an opportunity for a kid that, you know, so many of us relate to a kid that can step into Star Wars and make it their own. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the beauty of the storytelling that's going on now is that everybody can kind of find where their entry point is. Mm -hmm. And speaking of Skeleton Crew, I mean, that was so exciting to see all the directors laid out like that. Yeah. I mean, what kind of made you want to take that approach with Skeleton Crew where you find so many different voices and put them in this one show? You know, we've been doing that a lot. We mm -hmm. did that with Ahsoka. We've been doing that with Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different voices that come in. Obviously, John and Dave really structure what Mandalorian and Ahsoka is. But when we knew we had John Watts and John Watts is, knows all of us, yeah. that kind of continuity was able to exist. And it's just great to bring in Star Wars fans who are also great directors. And they may have an idea here and there that shifts a point of view, and that's exciting. That's what we want. Mm -hmm. And I was excited to see more of The Acolyte, which has been one of the more mysterious projects, but you said you've seen four episodes and yeah. you were blown away. So what, what about them blew you away? It, 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 Leslie, her storytelling, I, I was blown away by just the scale and the size, and as mm -hmm. you could see from what you saw yeah. in the room, it's very compelling. She's doing some really original things, and yet completely grounded in Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then you have Ahsoka, which is, of course, taking such a beloved animation character and taking them into live action. Do you guys think that that's something you might do more of? You know, I wouldn't do it without Dave. Yeah. I mean, Dave created so much of what was in Clone Wars and Rebels, and and that extension of that storytelling is something that's Dave's. Mm -hmm. And certainly working with him to try to evolve that into, you know, whether we do with live action, whether it's a series or whether we go into features, that's that's something we would do with him. Mm -hmm. And you guys have really played with kind of like intersecting these shows. You've had like The Mandalorian and Boba Fett, and we had a Thrawn mention in Mandalorian just now. I mean, is that something you might play with more, or do you think these are going to be more standalone projects? Well, that's really building toward what Dave's doing in the, yeah. in the feature space. Yeah, absolutely. Very and, intentionally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and how far, going back to these movies, um, how far along are they in development? We're pretty far along. These are yeah. things, you know, there's, as you can imagine, certainly looking at what Dave's been doing with Ahsoka, mm -hmm. that'll be at least six, seven years building to what it is we're going to be doing mm -hmm. in in a movie. As far as Charmaine, we've been working on that for a couple of years already. Mm -hmm. um, and with what Jim's doing, Jim and I, because we had the benefit of doing Indiana Jones together, mm -hmm. there was a lot of discussion about what that story is. And so he's... You know, what's great about Jim is he, he's a writer-director, mm -hmm. much like Dave is, so he can move that along at a pretty fast pace. Mm -hmm. So everything's everything's kind of moving along. I, we may have a really nice situation where we have all of these things ready to go, and we can take our time figuring out when we make them. Yeah, I mean, we'd like that to see yeah. them all go <laughs> up. And I think, you know, I think Star Wars is kind of a genre unto itself at mm -hmm. this point. Um, are there any kind of genres, though, that you want to play more with within Star Wars? Well, I think we've been doing that. Yeah. I mean, obviously, George started that. So, mm -hmm. you know, specifically, we're looking at Westerns with what Mandalorian yeah. is. That Dave is very influenced by Kurosawa and Japanese films. And that, I, I would say that that influences the tone of Ahsoka probably more than 
than it does with Mandalorian. And then um, Amblin movies, Goonies, that kind of thing. Yeah. Those fun kid adventure stories, that's very much influencing Skeleton Crew. And then the spy thriller with Tony mm-hmm. Gilroy and Andor was very much in the vein of, you know, Bourne and the things that he's done. Mm-hmm. So yeah. very distinct genres. No, you're so right. And I, I also want to ask about um, Donald Glover recently talked about the Lando series. Mm-hmm. Um, can you give us any update on that? Is it still happening? I can just tell you it's still happening. Yeah. And he's very excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> yeah. And before we ra- wrap up, I just want to, you know, see if there's any like major hope that you want to, I mean, hope, a new hope uh, that you want to strive for in this kind of new era of Star Wars that you just announced today. You know, it's as I said, I I think quality is always everything. You know, we want to tell resonating stories that um, really speak to what Star Wars is. I I don't want it, and none of us want it, to become like everything else. We want it to be something that continues to live up to the expectation that fans have. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing to all of us. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Kathleen. That was so great. Thank you. (laughs)